All right, next we want to talk about politics. So when you hear the term politics, especially right now in the U.S., you kind of get this very specific understanding of what politics are. <clears throat> it's elections, and it's officially elected people, and it's fighting on TV, and it's attack uh, ads and TV commercials. Right, but politics is actually much different than that. Um, it's really a lot about um, power relations, cooperation, and conflict. Okay, so these are three kind of aspects that are different um, from what we kind of think of as politics. Obviously, there's a lot of cooperation, conflict, and power in our political system, but there also exists these three things in political systems that are very different than ours. So anthropology is going to look at political systems a lot more broadly than political science, and this is very similar to how we are looking at economics. So anthropologists look at economic systems much more broadly than an economist. We do the same thing with politics. Um, so we're studying Western democracy and really any political organizational system or practice that's been tried anywhere in the world. And so we're looking at those and we're studying how different cultures look at um, power and how different cultures organize themselves. So then what exactly are politics? Politics are basically just relationships and processes of cooperation, conflict, and power, but they're fundamental aspects of human life. Okay, and we see these three aspects and processes in every single group of humans that exist. Okay, politics are actually rooted in our social interactions every single day as well as our belief systems and our cultural practices. So in the U.S., we kind of think about politics separate from your everyday life, but if we're thinking about politics in terms of cooperation, conflict, and power, then they have to be integrated into your daily life, belief system, and cultural practices. And then politics are also these processes of persuasion, force, and violence, as well as control over resources. So within these ideas of conflict and power, you're also going to see persuasion, force, and violence and control over resources which influences um, your power um, and you often get that through persuasion or force. So we tend to think that politics are these formal political institutions that we see in state societies like the United States or Western um, governments, but that's not really the case. There are a lot of different political organizations. Okay. And then what is government? So government, separate from politics, is um, a legal or constitutional domain. Um, this is the source of law, order, or legitimate force. Okay, so separate from politics, which is just a much more broad category of conflict, cooperation, power. Government is this separate legal domain, and this is the source of law and order. Does every society have one? Absolutely not. There are societies that exist without a government. Okay, so these are going to be called acephalous societies. Um, your book calls them headless societies, but it's the same thing. Societies without a governing head, um, generally also having no hierarchical leadership. And this can be kind of hard for us to understand. Um, we think, well, someone has to be in charge of the government, right? But what if you don't have a government? Okay, so the Kung are a great example of an acephalous society. And so they don't have a separate political sphere from their social sphere, and instead they're focusing on group consensus. So they're an egalitarian society, um, and they focus on food sharing as their major organizational principle. Um, if you don't share food, you are shamed, you are ostracized, and you are banished from the society. So this doesn't leave a whole lot of room for formal laws. They have these informal social controls. Okay, and this is just an example. Your book goes into greater detail about different types of informal social controls, which I think is a really great discussion and something that I'm expecting you all to get from the textbook. Okay, um, but with these informal social controls, you don't really have a need for law the same way. Okay, and law just being a set of rules established by some formal authority as opposed to um, by the society itself um, kind of more organically.